بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We are still studying the chapter that deals with conditions in selling and buying and hadith number 273 is with us so who would kindly read it yes akhi narrated jabir while i was riding a camel it felt tired and i wanted to set it loose the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam caught up with me and prayed for me and he stroked the camel the camel became fast as it had never been before the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam then said sell it to me for one ounce of gold I said, no. He again said, sell it to me for one uqiyya of gold. I sold it and stipulated that I should ride it to my house. When we reached Medina, I took that camel to the Prophet and he gave me its price. I returned home, but he sent for me and when I went to him, he said, did you think that I have bargained with you to take your camel? Take it and the money. They are all yours. Now, this beautiful hadith is clear Jabir ibn Abdullah was riding a camel and the camel was so tired so old he wanted to get off it and send it loose Khalas, let it live of its life alone but the Prophet came والسلام, which means that also the ruler the leader of the army looks at the weak and the strong so the Prophet والسلام, was moving around he saw Jabir he went to him he prayed for him and this is the greatest benefit anyone can get from the Prophet ﷺ when he prays for you. Not only that, he stroke the camel and all of a sudden the camel became as fast as a horse. And he said that it ran so fast I could not believe that. So the Prophet ﷺ came to him and he said, sell it to me. And Jabir said, no, which means that this is not religious instruction. This is a transaction. And again, the Prophet said, والسلام, sell it to me. And he named the ounce or uqiyya. Ounce and uqiyya is the same, by the way. So don't think it's a different price. So he accepted. And we benefit from this that we also read in the books of fiqh that transactions have to be by proposing and accepting. So they say that a seller has to say, I sell you this for five reals, and you accept. Here it's the opposite, it's the buyer saying, sell it to me, and the seller saying, okay, I accept. So it can be both ways. It depends on what the community and the people agree upon and consider it to be sales, it's halal. So he went and accepted sending it to the Prophet ﷺ, but he stipulated, he made a condition. And this is suitable to our chapter. What is the condition? That I reach Medina. And the Prophet ﷺ agreed to that condition. When they reached Medina, Jabir took the camel and gave it to the Prophet ﷺ. In another narration, he gave it to Bilal. And he took the money from Bilal and went home. The Prophet sent for him. He went again. And the Prophet gave him the camel and the money. And he said to Jabir, do you think that I was bargaining with you so that I would get your camel? Meaning that the Prophet was just joking with him. And actually he just wanted to benefit him with the camel and with the money. Now, the hadith, we can elaborate on it in like four or five programs because of all the benefits that are included. And most of the hadith of the Prophet we can go forever. Yani for example, it's permissible to strike a camel or a beast as long as it doesn't kill it. Sometimes you see people striking their horses, their mules. This is permissible. There's nothing wrong in that. And also, you can understand that it is permissible to ask for a condition. For example, if I sell you my car, but I tell you that on the condition that it takes me to the following city. This is permissible, as long as it can be measured. If I tell you that my condition is that it takes me to that city or for the duration of one week, this is specified, this is halal. But if I tell you 
I'll sell you my car, but I'll only give it to you when Abdullah arrives from his travel. Abdullah could arrive tonight and he could stay for six years. So this is indefinite and this is not permissible because it goes against the soul of the contract of selling your car. Also, you can benefit from this that what happens if you make another condition that is not related to it. For example, if I tell you I'll sell you my car on the condition that you allow me to rent your house for a week. What does this have to do with that? A lot of the scholars say that this is not permissible because the condition is not connected. But Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah and other scholars say that as long as it does not make halal haram or haram halal, it is permissible. And the Muslims are held accountable by their conditions. If we make a condition and it's halal condition, then there is nothing wrong in that. And there are so many benefits from this hadith that we can learn from yet. Inshallah, this would do the job for us to learn, generally speaking. You should also read more about the benefits of this hadith because it adds value to you. The following hadith, hadith number 274. Now let's choose someone here. Yes, Sakhi. Narrated by Abu Huraira, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam resident of a town from selling for a Bedouin and do not practice Najash. Do not offer a high price for a thing which you do not want to buy in order to deceive the people. No Muslim should offer more for a thing already bought by his Muslim brother, nor should he propose to a girl already engaged to another Muslim. A Muslim woman must not for the divorce of her sister, co-wife, in order to spell out what is in her plate. Okay. Now, all of these were previously mentioned, with the exception of the last phrase. So we're not going to reinvent the wheel and talk about selling for a Bedouin or bidding the price or Najash. All of these we have covered, alhamdulillah. So this hadith deals with conditions. And the last phrase talks about a condition that a woman puts to a man who's proposing to her. So she is saying that if you want me to marry you, you have to divorce your wife. And the Prophet ﷺ said that in order to spell out what is in her plate, meaning that the man who provides will put food on a plate and you don't want anyone to share you in the plate, so he has to divorce her so that you would find a plate of your own and no one sharing it. This condition is forbidden. And the Prophet ﷺ said that this is haram, this is something that is sinful and that this is not part of the conditions that are to be used by Muslims. Why? Because there is harm on your sister. Now she says, okay, but I cannot live with a co-wife. I cannot live with a man who's married. So what is the answer? Don't get married. If this man who's married and proposing, refuse him. Wait until another person who's unmarried will come to you. But to make it as a condition and to ask this man to divorce his wife, this is one of the major sins that Allah Azza wa does not approve of because it harms a person, especially if that person has a life, has a family, maybe has children, and just because you're selfish, you want him to divorce. No, either accept being a second wife or a third wife or even a fourth wife, or you have all the right to refuse getting married to him. Now, these two hadiths that we've covered, alhamdulillah, I believe that before the break is due, we can take some of the questions because I believe that you have a lot of questions to ask. Assalamu alaikum. Salam. Previously, I told that if a man is proposing to a girl and if the girl can put a condition that you can't marry a second wife after you marry me. So this might injure some other woman. 
because Islam allows uh, four marriages because of various reasons. So why can the girl put this condition? Marriage or polygamy, marrying another wife, is it mandatory, recommended, permissible, not recommended, or forbidden? All five. All five can apply depending on the conditions. And these are known as al-ahkam al-taklifiyya. In usul al-fiqh, you have ahkam taklifiyya and you have ahkam wad'iyya. Things that are related to applicable, authentic or void or nullified. These are wad'iyya to do with whether it's accepted or not accepted. And things that are related to the five rulings, ahkam taklifiyya, these are that every individual is accountable for. You either have mandatory or forbidden, recommended or not recommended or permissible in the middle. So marriage can be one of the five depending. When a woman makes it a condition and you accept she did not do anything haram and you did not do anything haram, it's like moving her from one city to the other. It's permissible. Your job is to relocate. Is it mandatory? You can take it and you cannot. Likewise with marriage. And we have a short break. Stay tuned and inshallah, we'll be right back. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. So going back to your question, when a woman makes such a condition, this is her right. She did not make anything haram. She is simply defining what she wants in her future. A woman says, I accept marrying you on the condition that you give me the right to finish my four years in university. You say, okay. After one year, you said, I want you to sit home. This is not fulfilling the conditions and you may accept and fulfill the conditions because you have made an agreement or she has the right to separate from you and say, I don't want to stay with you anymore. Yes, Akhi. The question is related to the Hadith number 273 narrated by Jabir radiallahu anhu. It says, I sold it and stipulated that I should write it to my house. So if anything happens to the product or the merchandise, who shall bear the risk? It has not been delivered yet. So as long as it is in within... Now, we've said this before. The buyer and the seller. If the seller released and the buyer said, no, I don't want it now. Keep it with you for a couple of weeks and then I will collect it. And it is destroyed or is killed or is wasted or stolen without any aggression from the part of the seller not taking the proper actions. If he did not do anything, if he was not careless and he did not do any form of aggression, then the buyer loses it because I gave it to him, he did not take it. If it's the other way around, as in the case of Jabir, now the transaction has been performed. Jabir said, yes, but I make a condition until I reach. So on the way, if it dies, a heart attack, cholesterol, diabetic, or whatever, it dies on the road, then the Prophet or the one who bought it can claim the money. It died in your watch. It died before I collected it. So it's exactly like the crops. The Prophet ﷺ forbade from selling until they ripe. And he said that if there is uh, something that, a disaster that killed it, an illness or whatever, how do you take your brother's money? Why? Because it's still in my possession and my watch. Another question? Yes, sir. Sheikh, this is a question related to the conditions. Nowadays, we see that in the advertisements that which are shown, you know, they offer good prices, but in the end, they put that, you know, offers, you know, terms and conditions apply. They are not clear. So what advice do you give to the Muslims with regards to this? When the terms and conditions are not been made clear. And the other is, what about the condition of guarantee and warranty period? Okay. First of all, I answer only one question. Second of all, in terms of the conditions the people make, 
generally speaking, these terms and conditions are made to save them from any liability, from being sued, etc. But the transaction as a transaction is normal. You take this, you pay for it, end of story. For example, you may go to a restaurant that sells coffee mugs, and you will find that on the coffee that if you get burnt or scalded, then this is your responsibility. Be careful, this is very hot, it's very so-and-so. So these are only to save them from being sued or something like that. Secondly, unfortunately, the transactions that are taking place, are they taking place between two Muslims? Usually between a Muslim and a non-Muslim. So you cannot hold them accountable because you're not in a Muslim country. In a Muslim country, these conditions have to be clear. If I sell you something and I sign a contract with you, and like, for example, a big companies do, if you buy something online, terms and condition, and you find 73 pages, and at the bottom you say, I agree, or don't agree. Whoever read these conditions in his life? No one. So I'm not gonna, if it's one page, I'm not gonna read it. 73 pages? I well, agree, khalas. Let's get it over with. But, technically speaking, as long as you press the button, I agree, then you agree. You should have read the conditions, and most of us, if they read the conditions, they're not gonna agree to it. So you bear the consequences of buying something without going thoroughly through the conditions and signing a contract. As for your second question, as an exception, and I always make exceptions every now and then, the issue of guarantees and warranties, we covered this previously, but just as a reminder, when you buy something and the company offers you a warranty of two years or three years or a certain mileage, this is permissible and you can hold them accountable to it because I bought the car and they offered. It's not me that I am buying something. And we've stated that if, for example, you buy a car, it has three years warranty or 100,000 kilometers. But while buying, they tell you, listen, the price is 100,000. But if you give us another 1,000, we will extend the warranty to four years. And if you give us 5,000, we will extend the warranty to five years. These two years are haram, because this is like insurance, like gambling. You give them the money, there's a possibility nothing happens. And there is a possibility the whole car can be changed because of such an error or manufacturing default. So this, inshallah, yani clarifies it a little bit. Akhi, at the end. Yes, yeah, Sheikh, you mentioned just before about insurance. So what's your ruling regarding the life insurance? nowadays we also discussed this before but again and again it is not permissible to undergo what's known as commercial insurance whether it's life insurance medical insurance car insurance property insurance because this type of insurance involves a lot of ambiguity now when you buy something you pay a hundred you get something for it in insurance you are gambling you pay a thousand for any type of insurance and they cover you up to a million in damages. But there is a possibility that throughout the year you will not need their coverage, so you lose the one thousand. It's like lottery. You pay few rupees and you may become a multimillionaire and maybe you lose the money you have paid. So this type of gambling is forbidden in Islam. In insurance is prohibited in Islam with the exception of what's known as cooperative insurance which is Islamic insurance but it is very difficult to apply all of us have a pot and we put money inside and say whoever needs money for emergency accident car accident medical insurance whatever we take from this pot this is halal because we are collaborating on Halal, there's no interest, there's no gambling. We want to benefit one another. One year finishes and no one uses what's in the pot. So, okay, remains as it is. In one month's time, he takes 100, he takes 500, he takes 1,000. They have problems, accidents. In one month, the money is over, it's finished. 
The brother comes and says, I have an accident, I need money. Oops, there's nothing in sight. Where's my money? Yeah, it wasn't your money. You were cooperating, collaborating with the brothers to help one another. The money is over, khalas. This is halal. Unfortunately, this is not practiced nowadays. So Islamic insurance is very foggy and it's not something to abide by. The second condition or the second permissibility is when the law enforces you to have insurance, not out of choice. So in order to drive a car, they say you have to have insurance for your car. Otherwise, we will give you a fine and maybe we'll put you in jail. This is something not within my reach. No one tells you, okay, I'm not going to drive. I'm going to walk to work or I'm going to buy this or that. I'm going to ride the train. If there are no suitable ways and means for you to transport, then this is permissible for you to give or to take the insurance because of compulsion of need. So you mean to say that all types of insurance, whether it's health, medical? Yes, all types of insurance is haram because the concept is there. You put little, possibility of getting a lot, possibility of losing all. Questions? Yes. As in the hadith of Jabir radiallahu anhum, is it okay to bargain if you don't really need to purchase it? Just for the sake of bargaining. No, this is, yeah, and it would be wasting your brother's time and giving him any yeah, false hopes. Why would you bargain? Now the Prophet والسلام, was not bargaining. The Prophet والسلام, intended originally to give Jabir a gift. So he is sort of playing with him. This is different than how much is this? 500. No, make it 300. No, 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 450. No, make it 350. And you spend half an hour and he says, okay, 350 is done. So, ah, change my mind. Thank you. This is not fair. Like going to any shop. Do you have uh, any Pepsi Colas? Says, yes. So, okay, give me a Miranda. What, what kind of attitude this is? No. Bargaining for just wasting time and playing with the people is not permissible. The Prophet Islam did not have this in intention. He wanted to benefit Jabir and to give him the camel plus the money. This is all the time we have until we meet next time. Fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.